Everybody, how you doing today? So here's a location I've been to before a long time ago. Some nice lady let me in this building. And at the time, I didn't know the full history behind this building. This is the Lido apartment buildings here in Los Angeles. Right smack dab in the middle of Hollywood. Now inside, there's a very famous photo taken. Outside, something really creepy happened. And inside, something really creepy happened. And now I have a buddy who lives here, Phil, Phil Grishev on Instagram. Pardon? Grishev. <laughs> Grishev. Grishev. You said I pronounced it right the first time we met. Grishev, yeah, I'm close. <laughs> but Phil has uh, invited me over. We're going to walk around. We're going to talk about the history of this building. And it's got some creepy, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a creepy area somewhat, right? You were saying at night, yeah. it's got its... Uh, it has its moment. <laughs> it has its moment. I mean, this is Hollywood. Anything can happen. Right across the street here, that's Playboy Liquor, where Ed Wood used to hang out. Ed Wood, famous director. And Phil, in here, there used to be a bar, right? Yeah. In, yeah. The door is now shut. The door is now shut. And it, there was, I heard there was a, a brothel at one point in here? An operating I brothel? that moment. <laughs> so this building's been around since how long, Phil? 1930. 1938. 1938. Yeah. And it's, it was a home for actors and actresses. Yep. The rent was pretty cheap. The rent was cheap? Yeah, on our, on our money, it's going to be 1000 a month. Right. And now it's... 2000 a month. It's a lot <laughs> different inside, right? They cleaned it up because for a long time it was it was a transient yeah. place. Like uh, uh, mostly people, the bar was here? This was the entrance for the bar, yeah. This was the entrance to the, the bar. bar. Wow, it's all sealed up. But yeah, that's where Ed Wood used to come and drink all the time. Now, if we walk down here, this is where the story is creepy. Now, there's a whole... So, I know you know a bit about this story, Phil, but I'm going to say it for the viewers watching. Like I said, a lot of people used to live here, and they, it was, they didn't have a lot of money. And it was rent-controlled by the city. They, the various managers couldn't, couldn't kick the people out, so they were paying very, very little to live here. And, this, and it fell into disrepair in the 70s, to say the least, right? Yeah. But there, there was a couple that lived here, and they were known as Elvis and Jill. And this is in the 90s. Now, Elvis... You've seen Pretty Woman. You've seen every movie ever made, pretty much. Pretty you, know, much. you know Pretty Woman? Yeah. So in the very the beginning, way. when uh, Julie Roberts and Laura San Giacomo are standing on Hollywood Boulevard, just before Richard Gere picks her up, they're talking about yeah. if, they, if Julie Roberts should get a pimp or not. And then one guy walks in front of the camera and stops and looks directly at them and kind of gives them a weird look and walks away. That's the guy who used to live in this building. And his girlfriend, Jill, there was a fire on the fourth floor. I'm gonna include a picture of him right now from, the, from Pretty Woman. That's him there. There was a fire on the fourth floor. So what does this count? One, two, three, four. That window right there, right? Yep. She, right below the sign. Yeah. Right below the sign. Okay, that one there. So there's a famous Lido sign. She jumped, he got out of the apartment. She jumped, but she landed and impaled herself right there. And what else do you know about? They had to- Yeah, they cut the portion of it. Yeah, to, to get her out. Yeah, to get that. And what's stranger is, I read a whole huge article, and if you want to read the same article I read, 
They do a lot of digging. It was Los Angeles Magazine. Uh, about 10 years ago, I think it was. They did a whole thing on Elvis and Jill living in here. She told a friend of hers, if I ever jump from the building, will you be there to catch me? She had just told a friend of hers that re before. And sure enough, she ended up having to jump and she landed right there. Jill didn't make it. And Elvis is in some sort of, um, I think he's in a veteran's home nearby, but he's still alive. He is? Yeah, he's still alive from what I read. I mean, the, the article was a little while ago, but this was in the early 2000s this happened. So if this fence wasn't here, that she, she she'd still be dead? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> She's still, very matter of fact, yes, you would be. But that's it right there. So Elvis and Jill had a lot of problems with the managers. And there's rumors about why she jumped and he got out. And so a reporter went to ask him, tracked him down, because it was very it's a very hard there's a lot of sadly there's a lot of homeless people here in LA, and especially in the Hollywood area, and it was hard to track him down, but she did. And he really was not in the best of shape to give information why. But he said that the managers came in and started the fire. Because there was a fire. That's where they escaped from. And other stories is that, well, they that's lived... That's how they get them out. Yeah, that's how they get the non-paying yeah. non renters out. But also they said that it was a filthy apartment. They were sleeping on newspapers and soiled clothing. It was just full of stuff. And that there was drug paraphernalia found nearby and lighters. So they could have started the fire themselves. Who knows, really? Nobody's... And there was, there was no accelerant found either. No. So they don't know. But she, the story is, he went out the front door of the apartment building. She took that way and landed right there. And somebody famous, Phil, was murdered here. He wasn't that famous. He was famous at his prime. <laughs> yeah, he's famous back in the day. You're yeah, so. He <laughs> he's not. He's not Mel Gibson. He's not uh, Danny Glover. But Victor Killiam. What was the TV show? Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman. Yeah, that was an obscure show. Yeah, obscure show. But I think it was in the '70s. He played the Ferndale Flasher, and he was murdered in his apartment in this building. But you know what? Him and another character actor in the '70s. They both appeared in the same episode of All in the Family. Now, I believe... They were killed within days. They were, you know this. They were, yeah, yeah. yeah, Victor Killiam and the other actor. I'll put a picture here. He was murdered. Five days later, Victor Killiam was murdered here in your building. Five days apart, and they were in the same episode of All in the Family. In the 70s. Yeah. Just as it's getting dark, we're going to go on the roof and show you what it's like. But then we're going to go inside and show you what this building is most famous for. So Phil, before we go over there, we should mention, this is what I want to say, is what was done in this very lobby right here. Now again, somebody let me in a few years ago and I did a video just about it, but it's so crazy. If you take a look right here and I superimpose this photo, that's the Eagles back cover of Hotel California. The famous photo was taken in this lobby area. That is the fake chimney. Fireplace. It's fake. Oh yeah, is that it? That, but that's yeah, not. It was never there. There's no chimney here. <laughs> oh yeah. But the story goes that they wanted to get a. The Eagles wanted something that looked like a typical hotel lobby, and this is the one they chose. And it was apartments at the time. And then there's always debate, and still debate to this day online about the. Mysterious woman hanging over in the photo here and I read an interview with the photographer And he said it was just some skinny model who happened to show up and he didn't even notice her in the picture She just hung over and he's glad she didn't fall over Wasn't that a guy who was a leader of some kind of a cult? That's the rumors, but he says exactly Yeah, it's just somebody who was like, like it's a cult thing, but no, it was actually <laughs> just a he said it's just it was, he, he said it was a skinny model who hung over and then it was hanging over and he's just glad that she didn't fall over but here's the famous photograph right here. And I can't remember when I came here a few years ago if this was here or not. I think it's a new one. Yeah. It's also on the full cover, having the full cover of vinyl, which is it's a much wider shot. This is just a crop for the vinyl. Right. So in the 
So yeah, we were just looking here. This is where the fireplace now is. There's a huge window and there's a band there. And of course, the cover of the album is actually the Beverly Hills Hotel, as you know. Yep. I was just pointing out some things in the photo. And if you go to Phil's Instagram, I'll put a link below. I'm the last guy, or Phil's the last guy you need to be explaining photographs to because he's analyzed every photograph. So you like stuff like that. And you know, you know what you're doing. The funny thing is that this is the vinyl back cover. But if you open the, the insert, you can see this whole picture with nobody in it. Really? Yeah, which is cool. How many people are in here? Yeah. At least maybe 30. How yeah. do you get them all out to get the clean shot? Probably beforehand. They're all waiting outside, same maybe? Same day, same time, yeah. same lighting. But that, so, the, so let's see, where were the eagles actually? So there they are there in the photo. So where do you think they were? The brown couch. The camera guy was over here on the ladder. He's on a ladder? Yeah, they were standing right where the two round spots are. Okay. I mean the coffee table. Yeah. That's wild. So they're taking a walk around here. Lido means what? Open the pool. So where's the pool? Right there. What? <laughs> beautiful, I know. What a beautiful pool. Yeah, there used to be a pool right here. Right yeah. Where parking <laughs> yep, parking over pool. So the pool was right here, eh? <laughs> I think this man was back in the 80s or something. Yeah, they just filled it, over, filled it in. Yeah. That's it. But there's that fence right there. As you can see, it's gotten dark pretty fast. And we're going up there very soon. Show you some of the best views of Hollywood you'll ever see. But something else we gotta see first. Wow. One of the best views of Hollywood you'll ever get. There's the Capitol Records building there, the Knickerbocker. See all the way to downtown LA, just past there. So there's the famous Lido sign. There's the ladder up and it's shaky. And you know what? We're gonna take some better shots on the other side, but there's the famous Lido sign right there. This is our way in and the Lido sign's over there. So we can't really get to it. It's good for now. I'll show you some really cool views. So here we are almost on the roof right there look at these views the hollywood sign is right there and do you know the reason why they don't light up the hollywood sign at night i read so about no hikers will get there so no hikers will get there right yeah but there you can see it that's the hollywood sign right there oh and you know um i mentioned did you ever watch roseanne back in the day the tv show roseanne i know you know mark played by Glenn Quinn, who tragically died up in North Hollywood. The bar that he owned is right down there, where it says it's bar. bar. Pardon? It's a good bar. That's a good bar? I believe it was called Goldfinger back in the day. When he owned it, it was in that building right there. That's where Glenn Quinn owned his. Yeah, but he died up in North Hollywood. And you just tell me, Phil, in the movie Blackula, this was used as a filming location, this building right here. And you can see your building in the background. This is a far drop. <laughs> wow. No way. And right up over there is the uh, Hollywood Bowl. Also, the, that apartment complex that's over here in the corner. Yeah. It says Princess Grace Apartments. It's called that because apparently Princess Grace stayed there. Oh, really? But Carol Burnett lived in your, in, not in your apartment, but in here. Yeah, yeah I Carol. who lived in my place. Yeah, probably somebody famous at one point. Well, Carol know. Burnett lived in these apartments. Hope nobody got stabbed in my back. <laughs> <laughs> so Phil, I want to go see the uh, apartment where Victor Killian was murdered and tell the story. That Let's way. Go. That way. So as I mentioned before, there was another actor, Charles Wagenheim. He was around the same age as Victor Killian. He was 83, and he was bludgeoned to death in his apartment in Hollywood, not too far from the Lido, and they both acted in the same episode of All in the Family. Wagenheim is best known for Alfred Hitchcock's foreign correspondent, 
On March 6, 1979, a nurse caring for Wagenheim's invalid wife called police to report she left the apartment for a short time to do laundry and on returning home found Charles dead. Two months later, police arrested the nurse who determined she'd bludgeoned Wagenheim with a table wig after he confronted her about checks he believed she'd stolen. She was sentenced to eight years in prison for manslaughter. Victor Killian's homicide, however, remains unsolved. On March 11th, just five days after Wagenheim was killed, the 81-year-old actor was also found beat to death in the Lido Apartments here, where he lived alone. The building is located two miles, almost exactly due east of Wagenheim's home. According to the next day's LA Times, Victor appeared to be preparing a late-night snack when he was killed. A detective told them the apartment was found locked in such a way as to suggest the assailant might have entered with a pass key. Robbery is a possible motive. Some believe Killian had met a man at a nearby bar and was killed after inviting the man up to his apartment. A detective at the scene, who handled the Wagenheim crime scene as well, told the Times the police had looked into and dismissed any possible connection between the two homicides. I should also mention that this detective, Steve Hodell, wrote a book claiming his own father was the Black Dahlia Killer, and when that book became a bestseller, wrote another book claiming his father was the Zodiac Killer. But as if Victor hadn't had enough tragedy in his life, he'd previously endured being a victim of the Hollywood blacklist, and before that, had also lost an eye while shooting a fight scene in a John Wayne film. So at the age of 88, Victor was living out his final days walking Hollywood Boulevard in the neighborhood, and numerous reports claim he still wanders to this day. Ghost expert Tom Ogden writes in Haunted Hollywood, the trail may have grown cold for police, but apparently Killian hasn't stopped trying to find his own killer. Ogden, among many others, report Killian's spirit can be seen often wandering the forecourt of the Chinese theater. So we're gonna get some to eat, we're done filming. But what's this? Phil, who's that? This is the prosthetic worn by the famous comedian Arnold Braunschweiger. <laughs> the Schwarzenegger in the scene, in the scene where he said, hasta la vista baby. Right. There's a picture here of the, how they applied the makeup. This is the whole piece. You can actually see the blood, well, fake blood. It's not here. It's, all, it's a, just a thick rubber and the inside just says little A as in Arnold. Yeah. And there were seven, seven I think, or six stages of damage for the right. T-800. And when you watch the movie, you can see how it's all changed. And I, when I watched it, I realized this is the moment where he was saying after the Vista baby. So it was pretty cool. Right. And you know he wore it because no stuntman had those prosthetics on. Because stuntman just had that little thing painted on. Right. For the far away shots. Right. But up close, they needed yeah. something real. Yeah, this one was used. Yeah. yeah. It's rubber. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Not for sale. <laughs> I have more of this shit here. Wolfie lamp. The movie, yeah? That's the lamp he had on the, not the same one, but the same model that he had on. From the mask? From the mask was sold by someone else. I couldn't get it. I, but I found exactly the same model that uh, nice. Jim Carrey had. Yeah, it was funny how much they go for now. How much? 4,000. For this lamp? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. What? Because everybody wants it, but nobody can find it because they only made so few. Back in the 89, this is 89. Wow. I Wait. think I think those those are recasts. I can't remember. Someone gave it to me. Those are recasts uh, from the from the actual mold they used for this. Because they made a gazillion of those. Die Hard Three. This is from the ending, right? Like when they finally reveal. Oh no! Wait. When they got it, yeah. When they it, robbed the bank. Yeah, this, yeah. This was in the back. yeah. Right. It wasn't full on shiny. It was just like a matte yeah. gold. Yeah. Nice. That was also from the mold of original uh, Maltese Falcon. Well, I was gonna say. It's pretty cool. This is the. Monkey, remember the movie Rebel Without a Cause with James? Yeah, of course, He's the beginning. On the floor, yeah. yeah on it's the ground, the very it's beginning. The same exact model from 1955, and it's actually working, which is pretty funny. Put it here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Yeah. All right, Phil. Thanks for showing me around. This is awesome. This is haunted. Is it? Do you hear things at night? Yeah. Just. I do hear it. <laughs> but it's not ghosts, it's no. the people down just off of it's Hollywood. Me in my, in my, in my <laughs> oh, oh, we got a big wet pillow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil. Thanks, man. That was awesome. All right, we're going to get some meat. Peace. Out.